That's awesome. Do you guys, are you guys okay right now? Like, if you guys can, uh, can tell me, is that good or is that bad? Like, if it's good, can you guys give us a Roman vote here? Still wake up, everybody's awake. Beer is coming soon, guys, one hour. Um, actually, I've got a question for you. I, I, I was thinking about everything you were telling me, and I see a branch into the, the question I can ask. Um, my first question would be around the co-founders. Um, and there's um, a teacher in Harvard, his name is Noam Wasserman, and he, uh, he analyzed, uh, I think, more than a thousand startups, and what he saw is that 65% of the startup fail because of an issue with the, uh, the founding team. So I'm thinking about like, I'm curious to know what happened like at the beginning, is it like, I don't know if, if you guys watch Facebook, social network, the movie, you know, like, and you see all this craziness. I wonder if it was like that for you guys or if it's different. And my second question would be more about the bubble. And are things different like today than when it was before? Are we, are we into a bubble? Like how is it now versus before? Is it the same thing? So if you can help me there, like if you guys want a question around co-founders, can you guys give me a Roman vote? Good. Question about the bubble. All right, co-founder it is. Uh, how are things going with your co-founder? Do you have one? I have a co-founder. Um, it's going well, uh, surprisingly well. I, 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 as venture capitalist, I saw tons of startups die because of co-founder conflict. And uh, he and I get along great. We met at uh, MIT and we've stayed in touch and we're good friends and very complimentary. I think one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to angle you off a little bit. I think one interesting trend in the United States uh, that's happened over the last five, ten years is a, uh, is a tendency to stick with the, with, the, with the founder as CEO. It used to be the playbook, at least in Boston, where some young punk like me would come in, come up with the idea, uh, get things going a little bit, and then the venture capitalists would bring some OWG in to, to, to run the company. Do people know what OWG is? OWG? Old white guy. Um, and then, uh, the, then sort of, I would get pushed down. The, the trend has changed quite a bit where, where the venture capitalists tend to stick with the founder uh, for long, long periods of time. And I think empirically, uh, uh, Noam Wasserman has looked at this as well, that founder-led companies do remarkably well. And I think recent history has proven that out. So if you look at the, the obvious story is the Apple story. You've got Steve Jobs, who were doing pretty well. Mark Scully, they suffered. Founder back in, Steve Jobs doing really well. And the story's not written yet, but Cook's not looking so hot uh, now that he's running the company. Um, you look at uh, Microsoft, cranking under uh, Gates. Um, eh, stock price has been flat since Balmer just taken over. Uh, you look at Salesforce.com and Mark Benioff. You look at Workday. You look at all the Great Valley startups. It's really the founder is still the CEO, and I think that's sort of a new part of the playbook in the United States. Which uh, one should be CEO? What's that? Which one should be CEO? Was and, it, was and it something easy for you? I, I, I tend to think the trend is more folks like Parker are the CEO than the talkers. Uh, and that over the long haul, the innovator uh, coder types, if you look at the math, I think do better. So Brian, you're not going to give up your job anytime soon? Is that no. what I hear? Uh, I'll take the flip side of the, what you said a little bit. I mean, I agree with you. I think, so what I agree with is I think the greatest companies in the world need a visionary leader, and they're usually a little bit insane. So I don't know you well, maybe you've got a little bit of that insane twinge. Steve Jobs, crazy. Bill Gates, crazy. Mark Benioff, crazy. You know, they, they're all like not totally, the, they're definitely not the operational people in the company. Uh, and often I agree, if, if they can be the founder, that's amazing. What I was going to say, the flip side where companies fail, um, or at least maybe I'm being selfish here, I think when the founders don't have an ability to stay through, and it's not, you know, in some cases, what you're saying is the founders want to stay through and they get pushed out or moved around. In other cases, I think founders um, take it only so far. And the greatest companies, I think, have the founders that can stay through and can keep going, as opposed to saying, ah, it looks like this was good, and cash out, and put someone else in place and move on and do the next thing, kind of the serial entrepreneur. And there's nothing wrong with being a serial entrepreneur. I encourage all of you to do that as well. Uh, but in, to build a really amazing company, you just it takes a long time. You have to stay with it. Parker, let me ask a follow-up question. Um, can you name companies in the, the great, some of the Great Valley companies where 
had a founder CEO, took it to a ne next level, and then kind of pushed them out, and then the, they brought in someone more seasoned, and it, it, it sort of that's, that's took another, off. That's another statistics from Noam, actually. I think as a CEO, you get more chance to get fired within the next five years of actually staying there. Like, yeah, there's an interesting example in Boston, where in Boston, the, the, it's an interesting story. There's a company called Akamai. You probably know Akamai. Two founders. One of the founders passed away on 9-11 in the plane. Uh, the other founder has your background, actually. He's a CTO and very technical and uh, terrific guy. They brought in um, someone from IBM to run the company. Did a really nice job. The company's 20, uh, yeah, I guess 15 years old. He just stepped aside. And the Parker in that company now is the new CEO. So I'm just seeing this more and more where the founder's coming back in as the CEO. And there's some moral authority that seems to be happening around the founder. And the VCs seem to be surrounding the founder more than replacing him. Yeah, and I think what you need at the head is someone with the passion and the vision. And often the founder has that passion and vision. I'm sure with Beam, you have the passion and vision. You know, and by the way, I want to be director general. I think that's super cool. I wish I could be that. But anyway, as you know, some of you are director general. It's, it's très sympa. It's the French um, version. <laughs> um, but you know, you need to have someone with that vision and that passion, that leadership that everyone's going to follow. And you bring in someone, say from venture capital. No offense, <laughs> used to be a venture, but someone who is. I know how to run a company. I'm a great manager. You know, great managers are not necessarily great leaders. Great people who can operate a company are not necessarily the great. They're the COO. They're not the CEO. And you need that vision and passion. It's often with the founders. Clément, are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say yes. As the founding team is, uh, is quite important, and getting the right people in the founding team is quite important. Um, for our case, it's um, so we are not exactly both part of um, a couple. Um, my chairman and co founder is uh, a serial entrepreneur, which is not bad. But yes, it's different. And um, for myself, I'm, I'm mainly an engineer, so we are quite different on this. And one thing that uh, was very important for me in, uh, in, in the um, first year on, or, or in the second year is that the founding partners of my co-founder just tell me, okay, we are screwing up on the business, but um, it's, uh, it's not bad. What is very important is to build technology. So this is, it's the kind of thing that um, a co-founder can bring. When, it, when things are going bad, you need someone to take, take care of you and take, take you out of the sea and, and make it happen again. Yeah. So that's a co-founder role for me. Rachel. Um, Do you have a co-founder? Of course, yes. Good. I have a co-founder, and um, we really wanted to. We have a sort of strong relationship because um, I have chosen to marry him. <laughs> we, after we've created the company, we also started another startup with a kid. So, um, so yes, I think it's a very good thing because uh, uh, no compromise. I was the CEO. Okay. <laughs> Of course. So no. What, I mean, it's a kid, <laughs> um, It's it's very. Of course, the uh, we we had a lot of friends who who started startups, and because of very bad relationship at the end uh, with their co-founders, they have uh, yes, they have stopped their 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 entrepreneurship trip. So so yes, to be married with him, of course, uh, he's smart huh, also. But uh, we, of course, it's it's very cool in terms of uh, yeah for the relationship, the first year and and even now huh, we we for our investors it's a, it's a good sign because of course we are always working even uh, <laughs> even late in the evening we we are always talking about uh, so it it also means means that we are sort of optimizing uh, the our work. Uh, and how we how we uh, work together. Uh, I uh, I sleep with my uh, with my cell phone, and uh, I can give him all the the, the, the SMS when we have some uh, server downside or something like that. So so I have uh, I can reach my CTO, you know, immediately. So that's great for the company. <laughs> uh, yes, but 
I, I think for us, in, in our case, uh, from a pure professional point of view, it was very good uh, to, to start uh, in this uh, context. Uh, I must acknowledge, of course, that it's difficult from a personal point of view also, because uh, you are always uh, talking about work. And, uh, but at the end of the day, we, we, we are very, very glad to, to share that. And uh, it's very great also to share uh, it's the Russian mountains huh, also. So it's uh, very difficult to share the bad times, but when we share very good times, that's the best. So, but it's a particular situation. <laughs> it's, it's like marriage, I think. Uh, we, we are engaged in a lot of uh, yeah, area. <laughs> so, all right, now you've got We've been through, like, just so you guys follow the logic again, like, we, we've been through the beginning, what inspires you, then how is it at the very early stage of, of your company and how everything's going with your co-founders, and I think you, you guys started to jump into that, like, uh, but what happened when, you know, things start to go well, you've got some initial traction, and then comes the time you need to hire someone, um, and then I guess you need to hire more people than two, than three, than, I don't know how many people you've got at Salesforce, but I guess, like, more than one, and, uh, like, uh, what, how, you know, how, how is it? Like, is it something easy to get your first hire? Is it, did you do the right move? Like, did you learn anything by doing that? And, um, and again, like, for you guys, it's going back to memory, but, um, but I would like to start with you, um, the, I don't know, Rachel or Clement, like, because it's more fresh in your, in your mind, but, and also titles. You know, like, I don't think you started being, being like, who's gonna be the director general, uh, and uh, who's gonna be, like, you, you don't really think that way at the beginning, but, when your board is going to come to you and ask you who does what here, like what, what's happening, and when employees are coming, like do you give equity away? Uh, do you know? Do you do you give people like do you trust them? Do you micromanage them? Like how, how do you? How was it? How, how how does it feel to our, you know, your first, maybe intern or your first employee? So my my first uh, hiring has been done in uh, in Technicolor um, ten years ago, or maybe at Inventel ten years ago. But uh, at that time, I was not hiring for myself or for my company. I was hiring for someone else's company. And it uh, somewhat makes a big difference. And uh, the biggest difference is um, probably not about the fact that um, when you hire someone for your company, you're paying yourself. It's a difference, but it's not the biggest difference. The biggest difference is that if you screw up, you can't escape. It's your company. You can't just escape. It's too bad. So you have to take a, a very big amount of um, careness about this and hire the right people. And um, if someone in this room or in this panel know how to do this, uh, you'll just, just tell me. Huh? Um, so we have about 50% uh, uh, success or failure in hiring. It's um, what I had also uh, at Technicolor. At Technicolor, I hired, I hired about 20 different engineers. 10 of them were quite good. 10 of them were um, about bad. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's 50 people, 50 persons. So, yeah, it's ma it makes a, bit dif a big difference because you can't escape. You have to uh, face your problem and you have to make people leave. So that's, uh, that's, that's scary, actually. How about you, Rachel? Um, so today we are close to 20 in, uh, in the company. And uh, yes, at first, the, the difficult part is also that when you are hiring your first employees, uh, you, you just begin your company. And uh, there's a lot of, um, it's very emotional also. So yeah, it's, it's, so you need, to, you need to bet on the right people. And uh, there is, a, uh, you're so close. There is so much in intimacy, uh, intimité that uh, yes you you share everything with the with the new uh, the new uh, the new uh, iris so yes you well it's difficult so we we've started with uh, with uh, trainees uh, and uh, they are i'm very proud to say that so we've started with those trainees by year 2008 and i'm very prou proud to say today that they are still in our research and development team and uh, and now they have titles and uh, <laughs> I just wonder, and for you guys, it's going to be hard to understand, but I wonder if it's different between, you know, to hire someone in France versus the U.S., where 
you know, you have, uh, I guess, more flexibility in the US. I, I, I was amazed, like, to see how flexible, I mean, how, I mean almost violent, how, but like, in the US, you can just say, okay, you're done, and you're living today, um, and that's it. And you might not even get any severance. Well, in France, it doesn't really happen that way. And I, I don't know any founders who like to do that, and I think the other thing is the responsibility you have of over someone else's life is, is something that, you know, you, you might end up, like, in having this struggle bef between you know, have early employees and, and like sometimes like uh, you need to separate yourself from, from people because they don't make sense any, anymore for a business. But I, I, I don't want to dig too much into that. I, I would like to go maybe a little bit beyond. And um, the, is everything still okay, guys? Are you guys okay? Yeah, Roman vote? Uh, you guys not okay on the right side, I don't know why. Is it, uh, should, I, should I turn like that? Is it better? Um, I want to go further now because you guys grew up your companies and, and I, now I'd like to truly dig into your actual business today and your customers and how you, what is your strategy to expand. So here I think some of you guys want to expand to the US. Um, you guys may want to develop your market in Europe. You're, you're obviously doing it here. Like, um, how, uh, how do you do that? What is, uh, what is right now? I would, like, I would like to start again with you and then we'll go to, um, to Parker and Brian. But, uh, what is, uh, what is your current strategy? Are you guys just focusing on France? Do you see your market as the world? Do you think about moving abroad? Do you want to stay here? And, and vice versa for you guys, like, well, what is your strategy when you try to develop um, around the world right stra strategy? How do you deal with local competition and, and all these things? You can tell us a little bit more about that so we uh, of course, when we, when we are doing, a, when we are running a cloud, uh, a cloud, uh, business, uh, there's the whole world, uh, you know, at your finger fingertips. So that, that that's great because you have a huge market. So we are even if we are based in the south of France, we are able to reach. Uh, we have customers in New Zealand, in uh, in South Africa, and uh, of course the US are today uh, uh, re represent today a, a large part of our customers. So even if we were able to 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 start a lot of things. Uh, uh, from Montpellier, from the south of France, we need to get closer to from our customers' uh, portfolio. And uh, because in our field in cloud business intelligence, there are a lot of there is a lot of opportunities in the U.S. And because um, the domestic market is really you know keen on using cloud BI, we need a physical presence uh, over there. Yeah. So. We are working on it. 